there, it's Julie Murphy, Women's Health Nurse Practitioner at Forum Health in Tampa. Just wanted to touch base today a little bit on intermittent fasting. There's a lot of information out there in social media, etc., on advantages of intermittent fasting. There is a lot of research studies that have been done about intermittent fasting and the benefits. So if you think about how we were designed as a people, our ancestors definitely time-restricted eating. They were hunting and gathering their food, so they went long periods of time between when they had their feast and then when they had their famine. So that was how our bodies have been originally designed. Uh, with today's society, it's not so much like that. We have constant access to food, so our bodies um, don't really ever get that fasting time frame because we're constantly having our three meals a day and or snacks, etc. The benefits of intermittent fasting kind of depend on the length of time that you're actually fasting. We get compounded benefits the longer that we can go. So around 13 hours without food, our body switches from burning glucose or carbohydrates from, from that to burning fat. So during that process, ketones are released. That's where we consider ourselves in ketosis or fat burning mode. So our body has to think about other areas that store fat to be able to go to those areas to burn that fat. Once we get to 17 hours is where we sort of hit what we call autophagy. And that means our cells are kind of looking, saying, hey, we don't have any more glucose around or carbohydrates or blood sugar. We need to really hone in on eating up other parts of, of the cells that are either not functioning properly, maybe they are cancer type cells. We're gonna get rid of those kinds of things. So apoptosis happens. Once we get to 24 hours, then we get more of a reboot of our intestinal system. We produce intestinal stem cells. That really helps our microbiome to improve bad bacteria, better good bacteria, etc. When we get to 36 hours of fasting, we get the maximum of uh, fat burning to happen. So if we've been having difficulty with weight loss, this is where we can cross that bridge and, and really get that weight loss piece to happen. And when we get to 48 hours, there's actually more of a reset with our dopamine receptors of our brain. And our dopamine, if you don't know, is our pleasure, uh, feel good, motivating sort of hormone. So, you know, people that struggle with, you know, depression and things like that, we can really get some benefits with our mental health once we get to that 48 hour mark. And then we get to the 72 hour mark and that is when we actually can really do a lot more repair of our immune system. We get rid of old white blood cells that are, that are bad and, and new ones will form. We also get a really good boost in systemic stem cells, which if you think about stem cells systemically, lots of people pay lots of money for injections of stem cells for repair of different injuries and that sort of thing, where if we get the production naturally, once we've been to uh, that three day fast, we can get lots of healing to happen with injuries um, and very quickly. So intermittent fasting can be wonderful. The thing is, is there are certain instances where you wouldn't want to do intermittent fasting. Some of those instances obviously would be pregnancy and or breastfeeding because we wouldn't want cell autophagy to happen during those times because when cells are burning the fat or they're using other sources for fat, for energy, the cells can release toxins and heavy metals and things like that, which we really don't want to have happen during pregnancy or breastfeeding. And then another circumstance would be if you have history of any eating disorder, you would really wanna work with a practitioner that understands that relationship with fasting and a history of eating disorder so that not to say that you can't do it, but it's just a better idea to work somebody alongside you during that process as well. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of information on some benefits of intermittent fasting. Always during uh, fasting is it's important to pay attention to symptoms that you might be having, whether it's headaches or they call it the keto flu and things like that. And you really learn how to navigate those symptoms that you have. So uh, 
just pushing the importance of working with somebody who understands what to do with intermittent fasting, symptoms that can happen, how to take care of those and help your body really through that. But can be an amazing uh, process in terms of intermittent fasting. So I'd be happy to help if you have questions. Again, it's Julie Murphy at Forum Health in Tampa. Hope that was helpful. Thank you. Hi, Dr. Sack Senate here, Chief Medical Officer at Forum Health. Thanks for visiting our channel. Make sure to subscribe to get the latest insights and information on functional and integrative medicine.